at the 24th anniversary of TV3. Good evening and thank you for joining us for News 360 Live from our new studios here at Adesa Wikanda. I am Portia Gabo. My name is Alfred Okansi. Coming up tonight. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Acrylic Paint, Heaven Insecticide Spray and Coil, Kale Charcoal Toothpaste, and Apart Foods. My Life Insurance. Tonight, President Kufuado commends acting Inspector General of Police for recent initiatives to improve security, hinting of a decision to confirm his appointment. Also coming up, group of prominent lawyers and civil society heads send a strong worded memorandum against the anti-LGBTQ bill before Parliament, describing it as a major step backwards for democracy, inclusiveness and the protection of minorities. Tonight, Rent Control Department gives all landlords, housing rental agents and all persons interested in the housing rental industry between October 1 to December 31 to regularize all the operations in line with the Rent Act. Coming up in business news, Ghana Telecommunications Chamber describes the mandatory use of the Ghana card for re-registration of SIM cards, which commenced today as a TAF directive. International from social media platform Twitter, currently banned in Nigeria, looks forward to being reinstated there following, quote, productive discussions with the Nigerian government. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Also on the 3 News app, go on your Google Play Store on the App Store and download it. We first begin with security and President Ekufuado has commended acting IGP Dr. George Ekufu-Dampari for the work he has done so far since his appointment. Speaking at the 50th Cadet Officers Graduation at the Police Training School in Accra, President Ekufuado announced Dr. George Ekufu-Dampari will be confirmed as substantive IGP. Because of its historical In all, some 129 officers made up of six officer cadets and 23 cadet officers graduated. <laughs> President Kufado said security agencies are poised to fight and protect the citizenry against criminals. The challenges to Ghana's security are numerous, complex, and sometimes quite unpredictable. I'm aware the recent incidents of violent crimes in some parts of the country have generated safety and security concerns from several sections of the populace. I want to assure Ghanaians that the police service and indeed all the other security services are determined to deal decisively with the threats posed by dangerous criminals and criminal syndicates. We can help them succeed in this endeavor if we urge the police and the other security services on and give them as much support and cooperation in the fight as we can. The president who announced the current acting IGP will be made substantive IGP charged the officers to be disciplined to assist the incoming IGP to protect the citizenry. For the recent actions taken by the acting inspector general of police, George Kufu Dampare, which are eliciting strong backing from the population. He has so far vindicated my decision to repose trust in him to hold this high office. Well, yes, indeed. The public confidence, at least, and the commendation for the new zeal in the Ghana Police Service is evident, but the sustainability of it. Is where the question lies. I've been joined via Zoom by Adam Bona, a security analyst. Ms. Bona, good evening to you. Thank you for your time this evening. You heard the president. Yeah, good evening and good evening to your viewers, Alfred. Great. He, 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 your voice, he's, I can he, hardly he, hear you. He's giving indication that 
the acting IGP will be confirmed. Now, based on so far what he has done, are you convinced that this new zeal and energy will be sustained in the medium to long term? Oh, yes. I, I, I am convinced the, uh, what the acting IGP is doing is sustainable. It's sustainable if he gets our support. If we get, I mean, the most importantly, if Ghanaians uh, tend to support him and the men and women uh, in uniform, the officers who he superintends over, support him. And most importantly, if he has the support of the uh, interim minister, who I think uh, he, he has, and from the president said today, I largely do believe he has a pray day day, uh, the support of the executive as well. So he has no uh you know excuse to fail and apart from that he is not a retired uh on contract igp so i'm expecting him as a 50 51 52 year old uh young man i'm expecting him to have a lot of energy to combat crime and to ensure that this country is peaceful and he has already shown uh all of us what he's capable of doing as uh, the president do, did uh you know say today so the the definition of interference and that concern that you the likes of you have raised over the period where you know you you have the decisions by government saying that they are only intervening to help the police service but you the security analysts in some other aspects see it as interference in the work of the ghana police service George Kufu Dampari as a person, knowing him, is he that kind of person who, who could be tough to resist the interference when it comes? He's a very tough guy. For that, I can bet you. He's a very tough guy. Too tough. And so, knowing who he is, I'll be wondering if any member of the executive would go to him with, excuse me, to say some nonsense and he's going to accept. I don't think so. As far as I'm concerned, he's risen through the ranks to be made IGP, he worked for it. And so I, I, I probably would have cautioned the executive, especially DCs, MMDCs, regional ministers and the rest, who tend to intimidate uh, regional commanders and district commanders. Uh, I'm sure uh, now they would know that uh, these districts and you know regional commanders and call them station officers, police officers at large, have the support of the IGP. Usually when that happens, like we've seen in other IGPs, pretty like the Namphoris and the rest, where, you know, uh, they would make sure that you don't bully the officers. They would come after you if you do. You know, the executive will stay away from them. So uh, I, I would, I have no doubt that uh, they have too much energy and, put, you know, uh, getting him confirmed probably would, would do this country a lot of good and doing the police administration a lot of good in fighting crime especially looking at the wave of crime we are we are seeing in in this time around mr bona thank you very much for your time this evening i appreciate it as always adam bona security analyst the coming days will be one to watch Portia. Well, still on security, the governing New Patriotic Party has called on the police administration to deal with persons who resort to violence as a means of expressing their disagreement to issues. At a news conference, the party expressed worry over a growing cycle of violence among the youth. Issues of security has been topical at the just ended weekly press briefing by the governing New Patriotic Party. A talk of the recent armed robbery attacks has been witnessed in some parts of the greater Accra region and most recently being the topical issue of the missing Takradi alleged pregnant woman. Nonetheless, the governing party has stressed its importance in working to ensure the security of the ordinary Ghanaian through the Ghana Police Service. To this end, however, they're asking journalists to be circumspect in their reportage to ensure that the citizenry is not overly alarmed. The personal opinions of some journalists into editorial facts. These pseudo facts are not always aimed at eliciting the truth, but are couched in ways that easily undermine political credibility and encourage attacks on political stability. 
even more pernicious is the practice of some media practitioners deliberately mining negative inferences from public pronouncements and delivering flaming headlines as facts from these inferences. Extremist journalism creates a climate of feverish inadequacy. Ideally, media practice ought not to elevate itself about the constitution it seeks to serve. For the director of communications for the governing New Patriotic Party, the resort to violence by the many youth of the country as a means of expressing their grievance on the many issues they find difficulty to understand is a cause for concern. He wants leadership of the police service to go hard on such persons to ensure this does not become a norm. We find it unacceptable that anybody who believes in and identifies with our party who condone violence in the confirmation process. Of course, we accept that a few persons who are nominees may be entirely rejected, but we cannot accept that a resolution is a resort to violence. Well, a group of individuals led by a legal practitioner, Akotuan Pao, have sent a memorandum to Select Committee on Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs in Parliament on the promotion of the Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021. And the individuals also include the likes of Professor Kwame Kakari, Professor Kofi Jima Bodi. Also, you have Professor Audrey Gajipo in there, Professor Raymond Atuguba, Professor H. Kwesi Prempe, and Dr. Yao Graham. Among the highlights that uh, the, this memo is looking at, so the committee vehemently opposing uh, the bill are one, and I'm going to run you through it very shortly. Follow me closely. This is what you're talking about, that the bill is a major step backwards for democracy, inclusiveness, the, pro the protection of minorities and the vulnerable in society and of fundamental human rights in Ghana. They also talk about the bill violating all the key fundamental freedoms and guaranteed under the 1992 Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, namely the right to the freedom of speech and expression, the right to freedom of thought, conscience and belief, the freedom to practice any religion and to manifest such in practice. So, matter of fact, this is not the, the last of it. They're also talking about the sponsors of the bill conveniently refusing to acknowledge that not all of our culture, that's the Ghanaian cultural and traditional values, can stand up to the demands of inclusiveness, diversity, and fundamental rights within a democratic republic such as Ghana. Finally, they're talking about the promoters of the bill seeking to whip up the misguided version of Ghanaian cultural nationalism by raising the scar that LGBTQ plus rights are alien to Ghanaian culture and tradition. That, those are the points in there that these individuals, lawyers and civil society organizations, heads and some lecturers as well, all signing this, demanding that this bill that criminalizes LGBTQ activities in this country be rejected. Portia. And yeah, we'll see how this pans out when Parliament resumes. Absolutely. Well, let's now go to the Ashanti region. And President Ekufuado has said the Kumasi International Airport will start operations in June next year. He told the Ashanti Hene when he paid a curtsy call on him. He has a report by William Evans and Gum. Addressing the Asante Hine Otunfo Seiti II, the President said the airport will start operation in June next year. Yeah, airport, many coffee and hot sun, we do as we do airports. 77% complete. Uh, January, I only be chance I a test of the airport, Yampa, by June next year. Now, the BIA at the Dina International Air Travel. We know how to be called on the Yampa. Touting his achievement over the years, the president said the Ashanti region has seen more road projects under his tenure. The Santehine advised the president not to be deceived by false feedback, but ensure his appointees execute their tasks. I say, ne kwa nso nso nse. Obe tu aprose wumu anu anu adena sweti enu adena niye huno. Peni ne mobo papa papa. Tanza baby ati ano. Ye beka diye deni ye kanche wo. Na wa u piese na kuhuna nwa huse se enyo na kuhuna ye. Yo. 
Zoom. I go for it there. Zoom. One venue and one ten year. Well, let's get into the MMDCs. Approval and disapproval. Rejections and acceptance. President's nominee for chief executive for the Pru East District has been rejected by the assembly during voting. Going by the electoral guideline rules, the nominee obtained 43% of the votes, which falls short of the 50% that is required for his renomination for voting within the next 10 days stipulated period. The president's nominee, Joshua Abonkra, thanked all his admirers who stood firm behind him. He said the will of the people prevailed in the election. The Bono East Regional Minister, Kwesi Edujan, said government will review what has happened and take action at the appropriate time. The people have spoken and the voice of the people is the voice of God. So we just have to sit down and do our analysis and then come up with a... Um, uh, the, the best response. I think we need to look at, sit down and look at the necessary scenarios that played out and see whether um, it is right or wrong. Dr. Kwabna Donko is the member of parliament for Pru East. The atmosphere in which this confirmation process took place is a plus to the regional minister to the security forces and all those who were involved. For me, that is the lesson to be taken from this, that when we decide to do something, we are capable of doing it right. Whether he's renominated or not, it is not personal. It is about the process. A traditional ruler and acting president of the Konkomba Traditional Council at Pru, Nana Kwekudia, said development is what people in the area need. And this, he noted, has nothing to do with whichever party that is in power. He therefore asked the president to use his prerogative to ensure that a compromised DCE for all is nominated in good time to lead them in development of the district. Let's now focus on shelter because the rent control department has given all landlords and ladies, housing rental agents and all persons interested in the housing rental industry between October 1 and December 31 to regularize all the operations and adhere strictly to all provisions in the Rent Act 1963, Act 220. According to the rent control, failure to do so will lead to mass prosecutions in January 1, 2022. The practice of demanding a two-year deposit by landlords continue to cause major infractions in the country's rental system, which many have described as broken. The impact of this demand is usually felt by the informal rental sector, which makes up 80% of the country's housing stock. It is, however, stipulated in the Ghana Rent Act of 1963 that a deposit of six months is the maximum a landlord should request from a tenant. The question is, why landlords continue to disregard this provision of the act. The public relations officer, Emmanuel Posu, addressed the media. Tenants do not report that landlords have charged them more than six months. They fear for victimization. They fear that they will lose their premises. So most of them keep quiet when even they are demanded from with the six months rent advance. Even if it's a recording or through the tenancy agreement, that the, ten the landlord has demanded more than six months is a clear evidence that we can follow through and then the necessary punishment can be meted on the landlord. Over 112,603 rent cases have been lodged from January 1 to June 30 this year. The department is working assiduously to reduce these infractions to revamp the rental industry. Make sure you give the tenant a tenancy agreement Make sure you come for an assessment so that we can issue with you an uh, assessment certificate. Stop inducing tenants to quit from your premises so that after the deadline, which is the three months grant period, we will have this, and the underlying word is massive, massive sense, uh, prosecution. The department says actions have been also been put in place to review the current Rent Act and the Rent Control Law. Well, it's about time this rent act <laughs> be reviewed. As, exactly, exactly. Oh, Lord. With regards to the story that I did the last time, mm. 
I mean, if this has not controlled, many people will resort to living in wooden structures, metal containers, absolutely, and in kiosks. And you know, this six months, uh, you know, advance one year, two years. Mm. Look, something well, needs to be done about and it. The good news is some lawyers have been called to the bar, right? Some good news over mm. there, and we have some here with us here at Media General. Just so you know, over two hundred and fifty lawyers have been called to the Ghana bar, bringing to a total of over 3,000 lawyers in the country. Take a look. The 2021 lawyers called to the Ghana Bar are to help bridge the gap between the lawyer-client ratio, which is currently approximated at one lawyer to over 1.2 million Guineans. It is my prayer that from among this group will make the next generation of luminaries who will lift our profession ever higher. We want to see legal luminaries in court, not on the social media. <laughs> Over the years, there has been concern about mass failure of students at the Ghana Law School entry level. 790 out of 2,824 candidates passed the 2021 Ghana School of Law entrance exam. This, according to Father of the Law Challenge, Reverend Moses Ankara, can be addressed. Before I completed my LLB, then I said, look, I think there's something we need to do. If there's a problem, you must find a solution to it. So the law challenge is to I mean, I mean, be a platform as a resource tool for law students and those who are preparing for the law school entrance so that they can prepare well and so that they can go and I mean, pass. And seriously, I mean, we, we will say that I mean, about four or six of our contestants, past contestants, have, have gained admission to the law school. Among the lawyers called was TV3's sports presenter, Aniela Alute. Edumako Samuel Pinaman was adjudged the overall best student, clinching the prestigious John Mensah Saba Memorial Prize. And congrats to Aniela Aluti. In more news tonight, the first Ayurveda Medical Center has been opened in Ghana to practice authentic India traditional medicine. Inaugurating the facility, the Indian High Commissioner to Ghana says the two countries are building capacity in the area of alternative medicine to provide sustainable health solutions. Ayurveda medicine is one of the world's oldest holistic healing systems that was developed more than 5,000 years ago in India. Ayush Medical Center is the first to practice authentic Indian traditional medicine in Ghana. The therapy treats cancer, fever, diabetes and pain management among other ailments. The concept is a specialized treatment based on the body, mind and spirit. Ayurveda practice believes every person is made of five basic elements found in the universe space, air, fire, water and earth. The main intention is we have to reach the communities of uh, Ghana. So we are doing even from the simple cold cough fever, we are concentrating on all the long lasting uh, diseases like uh, blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, infertility, etc. And also we have got the specialized treatments for treating cancer that is called rejuvenating programs. No side effects. We can always expect the side benefit of the treatment rather than side effects. Ayush Medical Center has recruited and trained some persons with disabilities as therapists too. The chief executive officer of the center, Dr. Ponima Zakana, reiterated the need for alternative medicine practice to provide total health solutions. We both, uh, India and Ghana, are working together to have strong cooperation between uh, the two countries in the area of traditional and alternative medicine. Soon we'll be signing an MOU to see that how our uh, institutions in these areas cooperate with each other, particularly in the area of capacity building. We are offering a lot of scholarships in the area of Ayush, encompasses many uh, multiple areas of uh, sustainable and traditional and uh, alternate medicines, including uh, yoga and Ayurveda. <laughs> Well, let's say a bit on health as executive chairman of Holy Trinity Spa and Health Farm, Dr. Felix Anya, has been sworn in as a board chair of the whole teaching hospital. The Minister of Health, Dr. Kwekwa Jimamenu, charged the board to efficiently 
ensure that the institution becomes the best referral point for people in the voter region. The 11-member board will be taking charge of one of the latest teaching hospitals in the country. The teaching hospital located in the capital, Ho, will be a key referral point for health issues for persons in the region and nearby neighbours, Togo, Benin and beyond. The health minister said though the hospital is yet to receive the needed support, the board should endeavour to make it the hospital of the region. So things that you need, it is you who should find the resources, right? You have to engage and let us see immediately the type of things that you need. You will see how best we can support you, move ahead and deliver the quality of care that we expect to be equitably distributed across the country. We're also looking for some level of accountability with resources that you internally generate and how these resources are dissipated. Dr. Felix Anya is the chairman of the board and has decades of experience in the health facility management. The executive chairman of Holy Trinity Spa and Health Farm says the board will work to achieve the set goals. He also mentions that there is a target to get accreditation towards medical tourism. One of the key things we've been trying to do is to get international accreditation towards medical tourism. And by that, we will have two, by this anchor, we'll have two, two we'll have killed two birds with one stone, create and uh, have efficient service, and then be able to bring in the much needed money for development. Stay with us, you're live here on News 360. We're live on TV3 Gun on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. What do we have coming up next? Well, business news with Della Michelle. I'm going to interview Zuzum right here in my house. Hey! Look up there. Why are you using inferior pen? It was a mistake. I know check you. Acrobat too. I'm going to knock you out. I know, sir. You deserve quality. Don't make mistakes. Stop. You did the right thing. When you are going to buy a paint, don't look left, don't look right. Go straight and grab the luxury acrylic paint. No be any painting, be paint you. The luxury acrylic paint. Paint me champion. Hello, my friends. My name is Calcate Toothpaste. Wow. I was made to be gentle on your gum, but protected. I will protect your teeth from cavity, make your teeth whiter, stronger, keep your mouth fresh all day. And best of all, I'm strawberry flavored. So put on a smile and try me. That's amazing. Just try me. That's my job. If you say so, jump on my brush. Make your teeth stronger. Chicky, chicky, whiter. Chicky, chicky, stronger. Yay! You did it! I'm glad you like your new toothpaste. Don't forget to brush both day and night. Girl Kids, happy smile. I love football. Football can be a dirty game on or off the pitch. <laughs> Even when I'm trying to score at a party, stains find a way of tracking me down. But I don't worry at all because I have Cleesoft. Use new Cleesoft 360 Deep Clean, a unique formula with active ingredients and enzymes that gets rid of all stubborn stains and leaves your clothes smelling wonderful. Cleesoft, my favorite. Cleesoft 360. Deep clean, clean all. My. New look, new bottle, same irresistible taste. Available in your nearest shop. This advert is FDA approved. Mommy! 
concerned about your family's safety at your home or business. Worry no more. Get more. For any window or door, get more. For unique custom-made solutions, get more. Call Trellidor 0561 242424. Trellidor, Africa's strongest burglar proofing. The business segment is brought to you by MTN, Roma Insecticide Spray and Coil, West Hills Ridge Property, Eden Heights, Universal Merchant Bank, Lufat. Hello, good evening. You're still watching News 360. It's now time to do some business news. My name is Adela Michelle. We're going straight into our stories for tonight, beginning with the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Telecommunications Chamber, Ken Ashibe, who has described the mandatory use of the Ghana card for re-registration of SIM cards as a tough directive, but says the Chamber will look with other stakeholders to ensure its success. All mobile phone users are expected to re-register their SIM cards in a new directive by by government to check SIM cards and also fraud as well as other irregularities in the sector. The requirement to use a Ghana card for the SIM re-registration according to the experts will be more robust and easy to validate. In the face of the directive, there are concerns of availability and access to the card by all subscribers. With this, what it would do for us is that it would ensure that there's a robust database by which you can validate. The question about it is whether everybody has it. And I know that the NIA, for example, is beyond the mass registrations they've done. They're now in the next phase where they are supposed to be having district offices uh, to be able to make sure Ghanaians get their cards. According to the Chamber of Telecommunications, failure to register or re-register SIM cards will hurt government as well as subscribers. Before you even come to revenue loss, you know that now telecommunication has almost become a utility. It's become a human right. What it would mean is that some Ghanaians would be deprived of telecommunication infrastructure. And you should just look at Ghanaians being deprived of water, Ghanaians being deprived of electricity, the impact that it has on them. But it's, so it's important for all Ghanaians, once this becomes available for all of them to want to take up the, the offer that has come for them to be able to do it. For individuals who may have in the past registered their SIM cards using the National Health Insurance Card, voter's ID or any other form of identification, a re-registration has become a necessity. Sigo Vodafone Glow takes Ghana card, any card uh, Ghana we use, but MTN doesn't take the new voter's card and the Ghana card. So if you want to register MTN, unless you bring health insurance or the old ID card uh -huh, or driving license or passport. Most of them come with the voter's ID card, even though some of them have the Ghana card. But when you ask them, they say, oh, especially MTN, you can't use both of them. But other, other network, you can use the new voter's ID card rather to register. And let's now focus now to cocoa, as government has maintained their producer price for cocoa at 10,560 Ghana CDs per ton for the 2021-2022 season, which opens on Friday, October 8. Announcing the price in Accra, the Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Uso Friakuto, observed the price represents 87.15% of the free onboard value. The price represents a 28% increase over the 2019-2020 producer price. This figure translates into 660 cities per bag of 64 kilograms gross weight and takes effect from the 8th of October 2021. Well, this price is the highest within the sub-region. The price includes the living income differential of 400 United States dollars per metric ton. We will be sticking strictly according to the LID by passing on the full weight of the $400 per metric ton onto the farmer. 
The committee has also approved the rates and fees for all other stakeholders in the supply value chain. These include the bias margin, holiest rate, warehousing and internal marketing cost, as well as fees for disinfestation, grading and sealing, and skill inspection. The government of Nanado Danko and Kufuado will continue to support cocoa farmers through the pest and disease control program, what we call mass spraying, high tech, pruning, hand pollination, and cocoa rehabilitation. The government has also committed itself to continue to supply certified planting materials that are drought tolerant, early bearing, and high yielding. The implementation of these productivity enhancement programs resulted in achievement of a record production of 1,046,958 tons for the 2020-2021 season. Government is also expected to implement the Cocoa Farmers Pension Scheme in the 2021-2022 season. Well, let's move away from cocoa and now focus on some fuel price related issues. As we know that it has increased in the month of September. Well, energy expert Dr. Yusuf Sulemana has urged and argued that the fuel price review committee to recommend to government the use of the windfall in the upstream petroleum sector to cushion consumers at the local pumps. Now, he observed linking the upstream and the downstream sectors is key in stabilizing prices at the pump. Dr. Yusuf Suleimana criticized the situation where government imposes special levies when crude price dips but fails to support the downstream when there is a windfall at the upstream petroleum sector. So another way we can stabilize these shocks is to closely link our upstream and downstream. And what it will do is that as much as you are benefiting from the upstream, you are going to be hit hard on your downstream. So if you are able to make money within the upstream like now, then you should be in a position to cascade part of it to cushion your downstream if you link them up that's what we should have done to cushion that but we haven't linked up the upstream and downstream yet if you look at when spt that is special petroleum tower was put it's because oil prices were going down when oil prices were going down we put special petroleum tax on the price build up and it has come to stay oil prices around 80 why do you still leave that tax within the price build up it is not fair he observed most of the taxes and levies in the price build-up have outlived their usefulness and must be removed. If we want to cool down the market, then we have to look at our taxes. Those taxes that we deem, you know, nuisance. I define nuisance taxes as taxes that have outlived their useful life. And there are a lot within the price build-up. Let's take them off. And what they will do is that they will, they will, at least they will have cascading impact on, you know, the price. It will have a cascading economic growth. Because if consumers don't spend because of high oil prices or prices that they, pump, they pay at the pump, it's going to, be, uh, it's going to have negative impact. And we know that the debate regarding full price review will continue. And we, the business team here at TV3, will be monitoring closely to bring you all the updates. But that's all we have for you tonight. There's more business news available on 3news.com. My name is Dela Michelle. Sports News is next. Do stay with us. Good evening. When we connect, everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable becomes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms. Because when we connect, being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life. Stay ahead and stay connected with MTN Business Broadband, superior internet solutions that drive your dreams. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. MB Speed Up presents 10 steps to stay safe. If you can, stay home. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water. Keep alcohol-based hand sanitizer close for frequent use.
If you must go out, maintain a safe distance of at least one meter from the next person. Cough or sneeze with your mouth and nose covered with tissue or bend your elbow while doing so. Avoid handshakes or hugs. Keep a mental note of people you have come into contact with or places you've been to. Avoid touching your face with unwashed hands. Drink a lot of fluids and boost your immune system with fruits and vegetables. Bank whenever, wherever with UMB Speed Up. UMB Speed Up. Digibank. Let's go. The groom is sick. What? Malaria. Malaria. Look fat. Look fat. Who malaria and come on to them? Lufat, a malaria drop a cup. And now you may kiss the bride. Entrance from a suitcase and research center. And I get Lufat. Lufat, a two malaria sent them. FDA, I just saw a dead in crap way. I just to say a yeah. Should you rumor to me? I don't know, master. A baby, you are now. She's so mad at me. Roma insecticide spray at that Roma. Enter Fred, enter Tia, make it her. No way! She make you know, and turn turn back or cry on fan of And no so I am pussy. Roma insecticide spray and mosquito cream. And my old dear, we are sham. Roma, and cry! Roma, and turn turn master. Sports segment is brought to you by Kel Kids Toothpaste, Consolidated Bank Ghana, CBG. Hello, good evening. Time to do sports news here on News 360. My name is Yao Ofosula. Now the Eastern Region Division 2 Middle League match between Oko United and Kwaibibrim United Football Club will be replayed at the Akimoda Stadium come Sunday, October 3. The decision to award the points to Kwaibibrim United Football Club has been quashed by the Disciplinary Committee of the Ghana Football Association. The match will now be replayed with the winner squaring off against Koforidia Sushain Sporting Club for uh, sole slots to Zone 3 in the Division 1. Around some more news, and Edmond Addo is having a, a good time this week. And after barnstorming performance against Real Madrid in the Champions League in midweek, there has been whispers about a future national team call-up. Addo has been called up to the Black Star squad for... Have a different path. It's different for everybody. You can, you may be coming straight from SHS. You can do it. You may have already attained a first degree in something else. You can still apply at the various faculties. Do it. Ultimately, write the entrance exam and come to the Ghana School of Law as well. I mean, with hard work, determination, perseverance, and with God on your side. Most importantly, God on your side. You can achieve this. I have my sights set on you know international law as well as sports law in agency. So you know when we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. But for now, we have to undertake a pupillage at least for six months under a law firm before you get your. Official license to practice. 
Oh, congratulations to Aniela. Then now to some more stories. And Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola says the rivalry with Liverpool counterpart Jurgen Klopp has made him a better manager. City are points behind Premier League leaders Liverpool and the teams meet up at Anfield on Sunday. Norwich City, who have not won a game in the English Premier League this term. Leeds United will face Watford and Arsenal after a very good run are taking on Graham Potter's Brighton uh, also at the Amex Stadium. And then on Sunday, Tottenham Hospital will face Aston Villa. West Ham United will take on Brentford in the London derby. And then Crystal Palace will also face Leicester City. And the big one is Liverpool taking on Manchester City. That game is at 3.30 p.m. We're now to some of the stories making headlines uh, today. And Kumasiya Santikotoko will embark on a training tour in Dubai next week as part of preparations for the new Ghana Premier League season. A 24-time champions endured a difficult 2020-2021 season, losing both the league and the MTN FA Cup titles to sworn rivals Accra Hearts of Oak. And out some more, and Manchester United forward Marcus Rashford took part in full training on, in today's training session for the first time since having a shoulder injury and a surgery subsequently. The 23-year-old England international has not played since coming on as a substitute in July's Euro 2020 final. To some more stories though, and Brazil legend Pele has been released from hospital after undergoing surgery for a colon tumor. The 80-year-old had the operation at the Albert Einstein Hospital in Sao Paulo on the 4th of September. Pele is the only player to win the World Cup three times. Well, that's all the sports news this evening here on News 360. My name is Yao of Fusulab International News and Entertainment. It's after the break. Water gives life. Water is life. Enjoy the pure, refreshing taste of awake purified drinking water, which comes in a uniquely designed bottle with a lemon green tap. Water is your perfect way to stay hydrated. And remember, for every bottle you buy, an amount will be donated to the National Cardiac Thoracic Center, Ghana. Awake purified drinking water. One for life. For bulk purchase, contact 0262-351-251. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Do your gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, mirror, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. Now introducing new Colgate Charcoal Gentle Clean for a naturally fresh and clean mouth. This advert is FDA approved.
you can be part of the extraordinary world of endless possibilities on Vodafone. With the best value and amazing data offers and services available in Ghana, your dreams are achievable. Get more for less with Vodafone Data. Vodafone. Together we can. Entertainment news segment is brought to you by Puma Drinks. Hello again on the grand finale of Ghana's most beautiful is ancient closer Absolutely. and our guest presenter for today is Wedega from the Upper East region. <laughs> Wedega, it's good to have you. How's preparation going? By his grace, it's going very well and it's good to see both of you. That's well. <laughs> good to see you too. Can't wait for Sunday. Let's get into what you have now. Hello, good evening. My name is Wedega. Let's settle for entertainment now. The clock is fast ticking to the grand finale of the 2021 Ghana's Most Beautiful. Six poised finalists are in contention for the coveted crown. Who best deserves the crown? Von Seto Nogwe, Volta Region's representative, is confident the crown is next destined for her region. Hi, my name is Seto Abra Nogbe. On this stage, I've been called Seto from week 1 to 13. I am a medical doctor, and here I represent the Volta region. For the past weeks on GMB, Seto Nogbe has been a true representation of the culture and traditions of the industrial people in the Volta region. She has improved show after show and has won the heart of many who have closely followed her. Some centuries ago, the phrase, a woman whose place is only in the kitchen, was widely accepted by people all over the world, and especially in the Volta region. Living with 15 other ladies from different backgrounds has been a remarkable experience for the 28-year-old. Aside boosting her confidence, GMB has been a real-life changing experience. Seto has learned to get the job done no matter what. I've also learned to tolerate a lot of people because I come here and I live with people from different backgrounds and so I have to learn to understand that not everybody will think the way I think and just accept how it is and then live with people peacefully. So that the medical doctor is worried about the stigmatization attached to mental health and is fully ready to addressing the challenges. People go through things and do, do not even know that these are symptoms of mental health. And so the society has neglected some of these very important traits. Also, I realized that some people don't even identify with mental health. People stigmatize, people reject things that can e easily be solved by an early intervention. The Volta region last won the competition in 2012 with MFA representative Driven by passion, Seto is geared up to go for gold and once again make the Volta region proud. I'm working hard, I'm putting in the work. Not just putting in the work, but I'm praying alongside. From where I stand, I don't think there's anything that can stop me. Because I have God and I'm depending on Him. This is why I believe this crown is coming to the Volta region. She's calling on all sons and daughters from her region in Ghana and the diaspora for support. I promise to do my best to push to the end to make sure that this crown comes to the Volta region, come with me. Continue to support me. It be the crown, I go way, way, way. Set up be the number one candidate. This crown be the ultimate. I did come take a... Wow. Mm. Okay, it's, it's, it's something to watch mm. going into Sunday, isn't it? And what I got, you're, you're in pink. Yes. Why, why is that? Yes, it's the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. 
and there's a lot to look forward yes, to. Yes, there's a lot to look forward to. I'm encouraging all women to go in for the breast screening to make sure that you are safe out there. Mm. Wishing the ever beautiful settle the very best in this competition. Kindly keep voting W E D A G A weather guy to the short code star seven one three one three hash or you download the TV three reality app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and you select weather guy from the front number fourteen. Wow. Thank you so much for your support. Do have a great evening and a great weekend too. Portia, Alfred, over Ooh, to you. Certainly. <laughs> All the best to you on Sunday. Thank you so much. Right. Number 14. Yes. <laughs> or oh, coming up, right. international news. The social media platform Twitter, which is currently banned in the West African country of Nigeria, says it looks forward to being reinstated there following productive discussion with its government. The statement follows Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari's announcement that the month long ban on Twitter could be lifted, but only after certain conditions are met. In Lebanon, the United Nations has sounded the alarm that the country's economic meltdown is on a spiral, calling on Lebanon's leadership to urgently implement reforms as extreme poverty deepens and starvation becomes a growing reality for thousands of people. The situation remains a living nightmare for ordinary people, causing unspeakable suffering and distress for the most vulnerable, according to the UN's resident and humanitarian coordinator for Lebanon. For decades, the crimes of a notorious serial killer have haunted the Paris crime squad. But now a former military police officer is said to have confessed to being the known murderer, the pork marked man before his death. Named locally as Francois, his DNA has been marked to several crimes linked to incidents over the period. His murders and rapes shocked Paris between the years 1986 and 1994, but until now were never solved. That's more business news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. Thank you so much for staying with us throughout the week. On behalf of the rest of the team, we are really, really grateful. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Portia Gabo. Have a lovely weekend and happy anniversary to us. Happy anniversary. 24. Hooray. <laughs>